Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman McGovern, uh, Ranking Member, members of the committee. It's uh, <clears throat> an honor to be back before the Rules Committee to talk about the Inflation Reduction Act and uh, to uh, uh, reiterate what much of what the, uh, the chairman has said. Uh, this is uh, an, an incredibly important piece of legislation which will um, not just save American consumers money, it will reduce their health care costs, it will ultimately reduce their energy costs, and it will take the most significant step that we have ever taken uh, to combat climate change. Uh, after listening to Chairman McGovern's statement, I have to say that I, I think that uh, our staffs must have worked together on uh, the, the statements because the, the one that was drafted for me is almost identical to the one that uh, Chairman McGovern gave. So there's value uh, in repetition. <laughs> well, I'm not one of those who uh, subscribes to the um, the often used uh, um, congressional theory that uh, everything's been said, but not everybody's said it, so that everybody has to say it. So I'm going to uh, extemporize a little bit and, and talk about some of the things which we know we're going to hear from uh, Republicans who are, quite frankly, scared to death of what we are about to do because they know, one, it is incredibly popular and with the American people. And secondly, that it does exactly what the American people want us to do, which is to deal with climate change, to deal with health care costs, to deal with energy costs. And all they can do now is, is use scare tactics to essentially uh, try to cast some doubt on what will be a very meaningful piece of, of legislation for the American people. I want to start with the question of inflation. Uh, you know, We've, we've heard a lot, and, and as the chairman mentioned, Republicans, and, and they've done this on the Budget Committee for uh, many, many hearings, uh, love to throw out Larry Summers, who predicted that, uh, among other things, he actually predicted three different outcomes from the American Rescue Plan, one of which would lead to inflation. Uh, so now they, they, they uh, jump on his back and say, oh, Larry Summers said that if you pass the American Rescue Plan, we'd get inflation. Well... <clears throat> There's a little bit of doubt, as a matter of fact, a considerable amount of, of, of difference of opinion as to what's caused inflation. And for instance, Moody's Analytics uh, said they did an analysis and said basically that the American Rescue Plan spending uh, contributed 0.1% of the 8.5% inflation uh, that on average we've seen over the last few months, um, a very, very minor uh, portion of the, the inflationary factors that uh, we're dealing with. So um, it's not at all clear that, uh, as a matter of fact, there's considerable evidence that it wasn't uh, the American Rescue Plan that caused inflation. It was the things we have talked about, supply chain issues, uh, the war in Europe, uh, many, many factors that are really unprecedented and that we have not uh, adequately yet, I think, analyzed. But here's the other thing. We're, we're proposing to spend in this bill $400 billion over 10 years. That's on average $40 billion a year. That is 0.2% of the $20 trillion budget and the $20 trillion gross national product, which is going to be uh, increasing, so it'll be even a smaller percentage. It defies logic. It defies every economic theory that that small amount of spending in a massive economy is going to affect inflation in any measurable way. Um, we're going to hear a lot about increasing taxes. And let me say that what the Republicans are saying is totally wrong, defied by facts, evidence. What they're saying, is, what, what I think it is very safe to say is that not one American making under $400,000 will see their federal tax bill increase by one penny. The only thing that the Republicans are trying to twist in terms of calling it a tax increase is the notion that because we are raising taxes on the, the most profitable corporations, that somehow they'll pass that along to consumers and it will, it will raise their costs, and therefore they're calling that a tax increase. That is not a tax increase, and there's, there's question as to whether it would even happen, but no American will see their federal tax bill uh, no American making less than $400,000 will see their tax bill increase by as much as a penny. 
And finally, I just want to say one of the things that I, I, I wish we had put in this bill, we didn't, but we got an adequate substitute. And that is, I wish we had dealt with a carried interest deduction, which no sane person in this country thinks is justifiable on any basis. Uh, but when we had to take that out to satisfy um, Senator Sinema in the Senate, we added a 1% stock, about 1% surcharge or excise tax on stock buybacks. Now, if you recall back in 2017, when the Republicans used reconciliation to pass their massive tax giveaway to the wealthiest corporations and individuals, the promise they made to the American people was that if we lowered corporate taxes, then from 35 to 21 percent, which nobody actually even wanted, nobody requested that, but they would take that money and they would use it to reinvest in their company and create jobs. What we found out uh, in very dramatic uh, fashion was that that's not, that wasn't the case at all. As a matter of fact, what's happened is uh, corporations use that tax break to increase dividends to their stockholders and to engage in the biggest splurge of stock buybacks in the history of the country. Uh, it's entirely appropriate that we now impose this excise tax, 1% uh, on stock buybacks, so that that massive tax increase that they were given back in 2017, uh, we can get a little bit of that return to the American consumer. So with all of those things um, said, I, I want to just conclude by saying that as, as Chairman McGovern said, we would have seen a, liked to have seen a lot more in this bill. We would have liked to have seen extension of the child tax credit and child care and early childhood education, many, many other things which we think are important investments to make for the future of this country. Uh, but as, as the chairman said, and which I think most every Democrat agrees, this is still a very important move forward. On the issue of climate, I was asked the other day, well, um, you know, the, the world doesn't think that we're, that we're doing enough in the United States. And that I think was clearly true. Uh, but what this bill does is it leapfrogs us ahead of virtually every other country in the world in terms of our commitment to dealing with climate change. We will in fact, given the signing of this bill, become leaders in the effort to combat climate change. And that's something I think we can all take a great deal of pride in. With that, uh, I thank you for the time and I yield back.